Hello, Ivy here. This week's podcast is entitled California Princess to UK Royal Princess to Global Princess. The idea of this week's podcast emanated from a website focused on parenting and child development, in particular understanding types of human behaviour and using children's stories as a framework to show and explain examples how they can recognise when people around them are acting in a certain way, to help them recognise what's going on and why, and to teach them how to protect themselves. As you know, I like to use academic models on occasions to give a framework to various types of human behaviour, and I consider what it would be like to use a well-known story around the world for a similar purpose. The difference being the audience is an adult one and the framework is a childhood fairy tale. I use that approach to explain how character building takes place in the first phase, in this case Megan's childhood, and then university, and then on to the continued drive to be a success in her career, and throughout this period from childhood to adult life, becoming involved in equality issues from a very early age as we all know, and how that developed with her drive to think of others less fortunate than herself and to explore ways that she could help. Developing a set of skills along the way that she would find very useful in her living environment and definitely enabled her to hold her own in the middle section of this story on human development and inner strength and learning how to read a room. Extracts from the website I used which is called We Have Kids, the link is in the reference sources, and which was the seed that started to germinate an idea in my mind for this podcast, looking at how a simple, globally well-known children's story can be used as a framework to position certain personality traits and experiences from childhood which carry through into adult life and the curveballs that life throws at us along the way. The key points highlighted in the children's fairy tale can be used in a similar way to a variety of academic models. The difference here is that there is very little need to explain the key points of the Cinderella story, which means that the listener can focus on the golden threads running through this podcast at the three stages of the story. And automatically, link the theme of that story at a particular point and can therefore concentrate on the impact of a variety of scenarios occurring to Megan and have a better understanding of how she stood tall through all that was thrown at her by people who meant nothing but negative outcomes. We will point out the personality traits of all the main players in this tale particularly the impact of key people in Megan's childhood, university and the valid experience of trying to secure employment and achieve a good standard of living and look after her parents and become involved in a number of global charitable initiatives which required hands-on experience in different parts of the world. Her multilingual abilities became very useful in this phase and could have been such an asset to the royal family in the UK. Due to their insecurities and their lack of skills in so many areas that Meghan possessed, made them feel even more insecure. Rather than embrace the additional set of skills, the family just added another justification in their minds for the need to remove her from their cosy and comfortable existence. No one is allowed to outshine the heirs, and to have a person of colour in their space was already an issue for them, but for their egos to be shaken by the fact that here was an intelligent, confident woman in their midst, not a Stepford wife clone, as was deemed acceptable, and a woman who made the UK royal family look and apparently feel somewhat lacking in comparison. It was clear that this entitled group of people had too many factors living in their heads rent-free. 
which was not sustainable in terms of moving forward harmoniously. Securing a place on a very successful TV series which enabled Meghan to become a millionaire several times over before she became a royal made the insecurities of certain members come to the fore. Meghan came to the UK royal family a highly educated and successful actress and a business person and a track record of many years being practically involved in charitable causes. Like all actors, Meghan was used to auditioning for roles and the rejections that occur along the way. It takes a special kind of person to deal with that over and over until the time, if lucky enough, to secure a much coveted role and the rest is history. The UK royals wanted their media to promote acting as a dollar store type activity. And that was not good enough to marry into their family, etc. The family are still finding out every week. Never underestimate and denigrate the acting profession, particularly in the USA and Canada and then expect to be welcomed on the performative PR visits to smile and wave at people when the profession is maligned most days on its media platforms. Let's have a look at a few direct quotes from the website We Have Kids in Question. Remember, this is not a story about children. This is an example of how one can take a story that is well known to most adults around the world and can use it to explain about behaviour and personality types in adults. At a simple level, it is attempting to make children aware that the world is not all about fairy tales, and that there are good and bad forces out there, and it is like an early toolkit for young developing minds to be able to identify certain behaviours. For the purpose of this podcast, I have used this website's approach to give a framework that can be used to explain scenarios and human traits that emerge from actions within those scenarios. It is no different to using an academic model, apart from the fact that no explanation is needed about the main theme of the storyline. The fairy tale is known around the world, and when I give an example of behaviour towards Megan at various points, I know that most of the listeners will know instantly where in the Cinderella story the behaviour traits are being discussed that actually appear. It is not likening Megan to Cinderella, far from it. It is merely an easy and quick way for listeners and readers to assimilate the princess experience at various points and will instantly recognise the characters who exhibited those traits being discussed at particular points. On one of the slides showing on the screen, and for those who are listening, I will read out the bullet points on that slide. It is entitled Cinderella Stroke Megan Treatment. Bullet points are as follows. Powerful lessons about human character traits and how they treat others. The choices made when faced with adversity, maintains a cheerful attitude and purity of heart, refuses to become bitter, hardened and cruel like those around her. When treated unkindly, we do not have to copy bad behaviour and act in the same fashion. Those who are unkind cause suffering to others. Instead of befriending, They treat her like an underling, and they make her work around the clock, even risking life of mother and baby on tour abroad while seven months pregnant. An extract from the site is as follows. Popular children's story teaches youngsters about human behaviour. The Cinderella story teaches kids that they can make good choices when faced with tough circumstances and unfair treatment. Cinderella is considered a beloved classic, a quintessential rags-to-riches story, but it offers so much more. 
As the tale unfolds, children are offered important insights. Life is not always fair, and difficult circumstances befall good people. Another quote. The importance of characters. Readers or viewers are soon introduced to a veritable palette of colourful characters, both human and animal. Through them, the story models appropriate and inappropriate behaviours. The characters in Cinderella teach children powerful lessons about human character traits and how a person's true nature is revealed in how they treat others. This is a fairy tale that enables children to develop deeper perception, a skill that will serve them well in real life. It's a site about parenthood, nothing more. Just decided to use it because of the reasons I have given above. I like to use models as frameworks to demonstrate key points. The model here is more relevant to be thought of as using a well-known fable or story around the world as a way to explain a series of actions. The storyteller never needs to spend vast amounts of time explaining the story. The audience already know it. Therefore, the themes that are being highlighted are easier for the audience to recognise and therefore makes the joining of the dots easier and quicker in order to build a conclusion as the story progresses in terms of the key points of the podcast or the article in this case. The UK royal family have no one in their cluster who has this background and no female has entered that space with a successful career and a millionaire status with a strong work ethic. Experience as a United Nations advocate for political participation and leadership, along with a World Vision ambassador to name but two roles. Meghan had three decades of life experiences in the school of life and hit the royal road running. The UK royal princess segment of this story stands out like a stage full of spotlights, highlighting how the UK dropped the ball and have never been able to retrieve it. Now the narrative is to dismiss the game as being unimportant and that there is another sport which is of more value to the UK royal family and they are not concerned about the increasing numbers of unsold tickets and the embarrassing empty seats around the stadiums. The royals are playing the game they have always played and they are not concerned about the lack of interest. Believing that audiences will return to watch the royal game out of loyalty, not out of interest in the tactics on the field of play. There is even suggestion that some individuals will be given executive tickets for some of the games in exchange for assistance with the upkeep of the sporting venues. The income generating idea that the royal family and its associates in the media is to incite hatred within UK societal groups and in so doing increase risk of harm to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. A whole industry has grown up based on targeted hate with the warped idea that if Meghan in particular is destroyed that somehow it will strengthen the UK monarchy. It is almost like a satanic ritual approach. It is evident that after the multiple acts of trying to dim the light, or if possible, put it out completely of Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, the latest from the Royal Playbook, with its faded pages, is to try and destroy the character of the only person of colour who married into the family and who, within two years, had to leave the UK due to the increasing risks to her life and that of her firstborn. What the playbook did not indicate was that the second Duke of Sussex chose to leave with his wife and son. Prince Harry had no intention of his wife and child being forced out of the country 
and unlike the first Duke of Sussex, we have covered this in a previous SJUK podcast and article, this family move as one unit. In the conclusion to this podcast, I will show how Harry's key points on his journey through similar three stages of his life. So whilst the UK media industry is busy scraping up coins from their dwindling swag bag, earned from incitement of hatred and harmful acts, and all of it in breach of basic human rights, and that the UK has sanctioned for this to continue across borders. A huge mistake, and one which all involved will regret on a public stage, and will occupy pages and whole books on the foreseeable errors and cruelty sanctioned by an institution full of fragile egos, and strong sense of entitlement of the right to be worshipped because of the birth canals they came from. These are the actions equivalent of a dying group of flies. These images that you can see on screen and you will see in the article reflect abstract themes from the podcast. On their own, they do not necessarily tell you about the key lessons. I have taken a children's story and extracted key lessons that children can take from that story and developed from that a set of themes that run through Megan's life, where her personal drive and integrity carried her through. I have cited the website where this emanated from because they deserve credit from taking a classic children's story and extracting lessons for children to take forward into real life and build character along the way. I feel that Megan was given a strong baseline in her childhood from which she developed an internal strength and determination which gave her huge success and wealth before she entered the UK royal family. Her time in the UK and her treatment mirrors so much of that children's story. Thankfully, we all know that if she had entered that family from poverty and with no real accomplishments and strong work ethic behind her, she would have ended up like the rest of the Stepford wives in that family, or like Diana, who was determined to exercise independent thought and had the strength to stand by her convictions, even though she stood alone. Hopefully, You will see how I connect historical facts, including the myth that the UK royal family welcomed her with open arms. Meghan was treated like a royal slave. Fact. Meghan's character, decades of character building and development and guidance from Doria, and loyalty from genuine people, enabled Meghan to survive that servile existence behind the gilded gates the unwavering deep love from her husband, Prince Harry, nourished Meghan and enabled him to see how he could have the freedom he always told royal reporters over the decades that he truly wanted. Harry could see that the dream was not impossible to achieve. Both Harry and Meghan come from dysfunctional families. They have so much in common and the mutual cruelties and lack of warmth and love from their blood relatives enabled them to become a phenomenally dynamic partnership. The character traits that they both developed during their younger years gave them such a view of the world and what it can throw at you, and over time they each developed mechanisms of survival, and neither family ever once envisaged that it was there. This slide is entitled Character Traits and the message on it is Meghan's plight within the British royal family has resonated with generations of women and the different challenges and situations she had to endure are timely for modern day young people who may face similar situations. 
This podcast aims to connect the markers in the sands of history and show the development and the growth that began in the younger years and is now soaring in the present and aiming higher for the future. And history will show how the middle period and the main characters involved were shown to be the weakest characters in this history trail. The most cruel and without any compassion for any person of colour. No recognition of a person of colour as living, sentient beings, which explains why there is no remorse for the target or targets, only the failure of each appalling new attack to destroy Megan, which continue to fail. The next slide is a summary of lessons. And the wording on it says, People can learn about maintaining personal integrity in the face of adversity and not giving in to despair. They learn the importance of developing a positive attitude and holding to a deeper value based system than those around them. I think this quote from the We Have Kids website to be quite apt at the end of their explanations about behavioural traits, etc., and is as follows. Does the prince really save the day? At first blush, one could dismiss this story as old-fashioned because the prince seemingly rescues Cinderella, but this story delivers a compelling message about female power. Cinderella has been tested to the max, has shown incredible emotional strength and has learned to find happiness within herself and to make the best of circumstances long before she meets her prince. Young millionaires are smart enough to know that they do not know it all. They recognise that there is a lot of value in experience, the kind that comes through having been there, done that. They put their egos aside and seek out mentorship as a way of filling in the gaps and hopefully avoiding some of the pitfalls that undoubtedly lie ahead. Megan's mentor is now Melody Hobson, an investor, diversity champion, financial educator, president of Aerial Investments and Colour Brave advocate. They are intuitive and creative. Cognitive science tells us that many entrepreneurial discoveries and decisions are made largely unconsciously. In these situations, emotions and feelings precede rational understanding. Young millionaires learn to trust these moments of inspiration and follow their creative intuition. Then they work to craft these intuitions into broader strategic plans that can guide their future ventures. They set their own course and do not look back. Those who reach millionaire status at a young age aren't the kind of people who take the easy road. They set their own course. They embrace change. They would rather chase their dreams than worry what others think of them. And they absolutely refuse to limit themselves to other people's visions. They are determined to live their own lives by their own rules and not waste time worrying about other people's opinion of them. They thrive on knowledge. All have a desire to learn and a passion for knowledge. As the adage goes, knowledge is power. They aren't afraid to risk failure. No one becomes a self-made millionaire under 30 by playing it safe. If you are afraid of failure, you will be overly cautious. The trick is to take calculated risks and know when to go all in. They don't trade time for money. 
they strategically leverage their talent, resources and power to create opportunities for more dynamic income. They focus on their strengths. Forget about trying to be a jack of all trades. Focus on mastering one thing. If you can do that thing better than anyone else, you will have cracked the code to being successful. All young millionaires know that they must focus on their strengths in order to achieve long-term success. UK Royal Princess Phase Told to be 50% of herself. To be less in the limelight. Not to outshine the next in line for the throne. This next image is a perfect summary of the traits of the people in control over Meghan during her two years with the family and is the cause why the family had to leave the UK in order to protect their mental health and their own family. The situation became so bad that Meghan had suicidal ideation and when she asked for medical help, the British royal family refused claiming it would make the UK monarchy look bad if news got out. Human resources informed the royal reporters all through this period, and rather than ease up on their cruelty, they stepped up their actions. One has to wonder, what was the end game here? Sussex Squad know, but I will leave the listeners and readers to reach their own conclusions. The slide showing the undesirable character traits and the list is callousness, envy, manipulativeness, coldness, greed, selfishness, cruelty, jealousy, spitefulness, deviousness, laziness and vanity. The abuse has continued across borders and a campaign is currently underway to have these abusive activities discussed in the relevant legal forums. The well-known phrase about small seeds and acorns growing is underway. Over the next few months, let's see how many seeds can be sown and where the fertile ground exists in order to see if a few acorns grow. From a few seeds and possibly less acorns growing, we only need one visibly strong growth spurt from one acorn to make a difference to the landscape. Watch this space. Third phase, global princess. Meghan was successful and a California princess long before she met Prince Harry. This fact was one of the major mistakes that the UK monarchy and its two in the line of succession made and their white manservants used to put strategies together to destroy this strong and able woman who had joined their royal world. The firm and associates underestimated both Meghan and Harry big time and still convinced themselves that the middle section of the title of this podcast is the be-all and end-all of everyone's aspirations and they are still mortally wounded by the fact that the Sussexes walked away from this dysfunctional failing institution and are thriving outside of the toxic environment that UK media would have you believe is the pinnacle of life's journey. When in reality, with each passing day, it is clear that it is the weakest link in the three categories and contains people who are inherently poorly educated, no meaningful accomplishments and go through life with a sense of entitlement to their every wish and whim. Every act of cruelty 
and fake critique of every action of the Sussexes, Meghan in particular, is eroding what little time the firm has left. Every slur that is created against the Sussexes adds to the brightness of their stars and switches off another light bulb trying to make the plantation behind gilded gates look like a fairy tale place to live. In their continued efforts to destroy Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, they are removing a brick each time from the foundation of the UK monarchy, with each action of cruelty or vindictiveness. What is worse is that they are not bright enough to see it. Their vision is impaired by arrogance. They are still playing a game on a pitch of their choosing, and their underlings around them have put up huge virtual posters of photos of the main characters to hide the empty seats behind the facade. The royals believe that they are popular, and everyone loves their posters, and the crowds are hidden behind them, when in reality, the people that work for them are stroking their ego, and telling them they are gifts to the world. They are not shown the empty seats, and they are not bright enough to worry about it. Instead, efforts are made to overlay footage of a few people and make it look like crowds are beating down the doors to see the royals. In the same vein, they copy and dress like the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in the false belief that their adoring fans will get them to the throne, purely on photo opportunities with people of colour. Forgetting the elephant in the room, that the royal family are now known the world over for chasing out the only person of colour in their family in under two years. How any sane person can ignore that fact and expect to have decades playing diplomat sitting on a plastic throne is beyond me. UK royalty is used to choosing partners from the same aristocratic gene pool. None of them have the traits as outlined in the Phase 1 Cali Princess environment. None of them could perform or last in the global setting in Phase 3. Royals are safe and secure if they stay within their white and tidal bubble of underachievers with money and who employ people who stroke their egos daily. Meghan and Harry are thriving away from the toxic environment, deliberately created to force the couple to conform to the age-old traditional ways of being royal. Protecting that way of life, regardless of whether or not the country wants or needs such an institution, Meghan and Harry operate on a global platform now. They do not have to dim their lights to stroke other people's egos. Their focus is on philanthropic causes and creating a legacy for their children. And more importantly, this is all being done by being financially independent of the royal family and the UK taxpayer. The UK royal family could have embraced Meghan into their family. Instead, those traits in the above image came to the fore. And now Sussexes are on their way to becoming billionaires. They have no reason to return to the shackles of the monarchy and due to the actions of that firm and its media, the UK has become a toxic and very dangerous environment for this young family. The Sussexes have been refused to allow them to pay for their own security from the Royal Protection Team within the Metropolitan Police Force. Because of their unique information in terms of levels of terror activity and specific threats to the Sussexes. They have their own security team now, but they are not allowed to carry guns in the UK and they do not have access to the terror threats information. The UK decision process involves a group who discuss such hiring out of Met Police for security privately and on this group are the next two heirs to the throne. So, impartial, it is not. So, any refusal is clearly done with sanction from the monarchy. 
So it's unlikely Prince Harry will be making many, if any, visits to the UK, and definitely not to Meghan or the children. Note that in many requests for security from this police force are made all year round. And from freedom of information request, the evidence is there of the organisations or individuals who pay for their services and the amount of money paid for each request. Yet Prince Harry has been refused twice. Hence, legal proceedings underway now. In recent weeks, it has been announced that certain parts of these discussions will never be made public. I suspect that apart from the sensitive content about Prince Harry and his family's possible movements in the future, it cannot be ignored that the next two people scheduled to be kings in the UK sit on this board of individuals who decide who can pay for security and who can be refused. Let us keep this at the forefront of our minds, i.e. Prince Harry was born into the risk. And since the addition of Meghan and the children, the risk has increased. There is no doubt that the refusal to allow Harry to pay for security when he's in the UK is 100% due to the wishes of the next two heirs. Other people with lower risks have been approved, but this current stance is yet another example of the traits mentioned in an earlier slide. Royal family have said security will be provided by Royal Security Protection Officers if Harry stays with his father at Clarence House, but not if he visits people and places in the UK that are not owned by the Crown. This is the same father who took away Prince Harry's security in the first place and who then leaked the details of their last two homes before they secured projects with good income which then in turn enabled them to hire their own security team and the purchase of a home of their own. The UK chased this family out of the UK, expecting them to fail and return, but that poor plan failed and the original aim was to get Meghan to walk away. No one factored Harry would leave too. All in all, a right mess for the UK reputation and now they try to make newspaper columns asking Harry to come back to the UK for various royal occasions when he is no longer a working royal and unlike the rest of them in the firm, he has a number of paid employment roles so he cannot just jump on a plane at their beck and call. The UK and media are playing a game, but one which the Sussexes are not joining in. The rest of the UK royal family combined do not garner the newspaper inches in the global press or even within the UK that either of the Sussexes do on their own. Together, they are off the scale in popularity and interest. The UK used to have first access to this couple, but due to jealousy and fragile egos, and poor intellect and skills within the royals, they drove their most profitable asset away and now must live with the consequences of their actions and provide increasing evidence of the continued abuse across borders out of pettiness and continued attempts at coercive control. They are making a huge mistake and they will find out in time why. The UK royal family never welcomed Meghan. Whenever you hear that phrase thrown out, just know that receipts exist, lots of them, which prove hands down that the opposite is true. There are multiple receipts contained in footage and in print. And just because the UK monarchy and its propaganda team in the media have worked tirelessly since Meghan won her case against the Daily Fail tabloid, to try and rewrite history by removing articles and deleting posts on social media platforms and hiding said articles and audio at the end of irrelevant search engine terms. In other words, the income 
is there still. The information, I should say, is there still, but not by using the expected search terms. They exist on the internet for generally people who know what to search for, which is usually abstract to the item in question. Wonder why they feel the need to move evidence out of view. Well, they stop thinking of Sussex Squad as bots or low intellect people like the raw reporters and the family they represent. Yet they think we do not have receipts. It's laughable. This squad is global and is of telephone number proportions, comprised of a number of ethnic origins and all are way more technically savvy than those who like to think they are smart. We do what we do out of love for the Sussexes and will be a lifetime protection force for the Sussex family for generations. We are not going away. Trust me when I say we are a protection force that was formed out of love and concern for how a person of colour was being treated like prey. A person who did nothing wrong. When all efforts and avenues hoping to find dirt on Megan were explored and came up with zero, the next phase was to try and destroy her mental health. And then to destroy her reputation. All have failed and will continue to fail because good people are spiritually protected. End of. I will end on a couple of acts by the Rotor Rats which show how Megan was not welcomed into the family and Harry is being punished now because he has not acted like those with independent thought in the history of the UK, the royal family and allowed their spouses to be casualties, in most cases, in order to be able to receive income to enable them to live a reasonable life. UK royals depend on the slave mentality and approach to keep members of the family shackled to the ankles of the heirs and to be foot soldiers for the family until such time the family consider them to be surplus to requirements and put them in properties for peppercorn rent and allow them to play make-believe in the property of splendour and to turn a blind eye to certain activities by some members of the family. No option of a life outside at this point because they would have reached a certain age where they have no useful skills to any business owner unless they were friends of the UK monarchy family and they merely come out and play dress up for contrived family occasions I call it pomp and ceremony, to continue with a facade of royalty. Exhibit 1 Megan attended the opening ceremony of the annual One World Summit at the Royal Albert Hall in October 2019. Megan had been involved as a councillor with the One World organisation since 2014. When the car arrived with Megan at the Royal Albert Hall, one raw reporter is caught on audio making the statement that Megan arrived in her chauffeur-driven car. End of quote. What was the purpose of using that phrase? How was she meant to arrive? By bike? Public transport? All royals arrive at their destination by chauffeur-driven vehicles. It was just yet another example of jealousy that a woman of colour, not to blood royal, was allowed to travel in a way that the reporter would never have the opportunity to do. Exhibit 2 The same reporter, who has written many articles on Meghan, and none of them have been positive. One such publication in the same tabloid that Meghan won her case against was published in the same literary liner tabloid in November 2018, stating the following. The proposition is deliciously intriguing. Two brothers torn apart by a divorced American interloper. Two sisters-in-law, one dutiful, one showy, whose inconcealed hostility helps to prize apart the siblings once thought 
tied together for life by their accident of birth. It is as if the painful history of George and his brother Edward, who abdicated for the love of his brash US bride, Wallace Simpson, to the disgust of his sister-in-law, later Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, is being played out all over again. Now, piling irony on top of irony, Prince Harry is leaving Kensington Palace, home of his brother, Prince William, to start his married life at Frogmore with his black sheep great-uncle Edward, is buried with his bride. Important to note that Meghan was pregnant with Archie when this article was written and published in the press. This is the kind of place the UK has become, where things like this were published, on average, 100 articles a day between the UK newspapers, with open hostility towards the US and Meghan and the choice of disparaging words and vocabulary. I have included a description from a dictionary of what the word interloper means. So if you had any doubt from the previous paragraph and you look at that description and then ask yourself honestly, where was the welcome for Megan? On to our conclusions for this podcast and for the article. Meghan was never welcomed into the UK. Meghan was treated like a slave and who never had any funds allocated to her to carry out her royal duties like every single person who married into the UK royal family. The family could not live with her bright light and successes and intellectual capacity and so set out to destroy this beautiful soul. They underestimated the strength and resilience built in the first phase and the same for Harry with his childhood and the way he was treated and then his ten years in the military and his ongoing projects relating to those informative decades since losing his mother and his life experiences in his twenties. By the time this couple were in their thirties They had a strong foundation and work ethic and views of the world that none in the UK monarchy possessed. Phase two of their life experiences proved beyond doubt that the UK royal family were and remain the weakest link in this period of history. And phase three is the Sussexes building on their solid foundations and leaving the dusty institution behind and continuing to thrive and at the same time make a huge ongoing positive difference to the world. The envy and the low intellectual capacity and the hate-filled hearts of the key players in the family and its media, TV and printed, is actually eating away at their souls and definitely destroying the monarchy. Meanwhile, the Sussexes are going from strength to strength, and Sussex Squad has mountains of evidence of how this couple were needlessly treated, and in particular, Meghan. The history books will not be kind to the abusers, and most of them carried out abusive activities in exchange for coins. The penalties for such behaviour will hit you all hard in a variety of ways. Evil will ultimately always lose. Goodness will always eventually prevail. Here endeth a lesson in mess around with good folk and you will find out the coins dry up eventually 
and karma takes a seat at your table. That's the end of this week's podcast. Hope you enjoyed that and found uh, some interesting nuggets of information. The article will be out tomorrow, as usual, late afternoon. It contains more details, a list of reference sources if you may wish to um, explore. And until we speak again next week, bye for now. Bye from Ivy. Bye.